Lisa Leslie and Lauren Jackson are two of the greatest basketball players ever, and their primes as MVPs, champions, and international stars overlapped quite a bit. Leslie and Jackson played roughly the same position at roughly the same time, not just for rival WNBA teams, but for rival Olympic teams who met over and over again on the biggest stage. That much opposition makes one thing pretty much inevitable. Beef. Lisa Leslie was one of the founding stars of the WNBA, front and center when the league came together in 1996. The 6'5 center had burst onto the scene with a dominant high school career. She once scored 101 points in a half, which is not a number I can like wrap my head around. Leslie then went from a superb collegiate career at USC to being leading scorer for the unstoppable USA team at the 1996 Olympics, a gold medal run that notably included a semifinal win over Australia. So it was no surprise to see Leslie as one of the prominent faces publicizing the nation league, nor as literally the first person to touch a WNBA basketball as center for the Los Angeles Sparks. When the league held its first All-Star game in 1999, Leslie started for the West. And once the league's first dynasty, the Houston Comets, came apart, Leslie and the Sparks were poised to take over. But by that point, Leslie knew a fresh challenge was emerging. She'd found that out from international play. In 1998, Leslie made the Australian national team feel her presence by hitting one of their forwards in the face at a pre feeble World Championship tournament in Japan. That helped build a rivalry that would only grow when Australia's next great center asserted herself in a bigger role. Lauren Jackson is the daughter of basketball stars and was groomed as a hoops prodigy long before she hit six foot five. By 1999, when Team Australia came to the US for some tournaments, the teenage Jackson had emerged as one of the Opal's top contributors. And in a game against the host country, Jackson introduced herself to Leslie with a sharp elbow to the ribcage and some unabashed trash talk in the veteran's face. Though Jackson was injured for Australia's loss to the US in the final of that tournament, she'd made her point with big scoring numbers, rugged play against Leslie, and an explicit warning after the fact. I'm not gonna sit back and let some Lisa Leslie go at me. I don't care what she says to me because one day I'll be as good as her. That final statement was bold, but not outlandish. Jackson was the presumptive number one pick whenever she decided to enter the WNBA draft. And in the lead up to the Sydney Olympics, it wasn't unusual to mention the 19 year old's name among the world's best players. Here's a 2000 LA Times article in which the author argues Jackson is like Leslie, except better at driving to the hoop. And Leslie's American teammate, Don Staley, says Jackson has potential, but Leslie is the best player in the world, which, like, if that argument even needs to be made, you are a pretty exceptional 19-year-old. Leslie herself said as much. So there was some hype building for a potential Olympic showdown between the USA's best and Australia's challenger. And the hype only intensified when the Opals played the Americans again in a pre-Olympic exhibition, and the two players exchanged some bumps after Jackson got tied up with Cheryl Swoops. Jackson reportedly stared Leslie down and asked, you want a piece of me? And after the game, she proclaimed once more that she wasn't just gonna stand for any bullshit from the older star who she'd previously accused of trying to intimidate her. For what it's worth, Leslie was less invested in the back and forth. She admitted that there was a rivalry, but insisted she and Jackson didn't really meaningfully get into it during that exhibition, and only Jackson was agitated about the exchange. Oh, and by the way, scoreboard. Reflecting on these matchups in her autobiography, Leslie paints the teenage Jackson as the instigator. She talked trash to Leslie and cursed her out, in spite of the fact that their coaches rarely match them up to avoid conflict and foul trouble. Well, come Olympic time, guess who faced off in the gold medal game? The US crushed Australia, like always, but Jackson came away with 20 points, 13 rebounds, and also a fistful of Leslie's hair. Yeah. So, I want to get some testimony from Leslie, from Jackson, and from some witnesses before we analyze the tape ourselves. In her book, Leslie explains that she took down her braids and pinned a fake ponytail to her hair for the final so she wouldn't have to deal with all that in the quick turnaround between post-game and the flight out of Sydney. Well, late in that USA victory, Leslie was lined up during a free throw and, though she's not certain, thought she saw one of the Australians tell Jackson to give that ponytail a tug. And Jackson did just that. After they fought for a rebound, Jackson yanked Leslie's ponytail right off her head, deliberately, says Leslie, leaving the victim to collect her ponytail and toss it over the baseline. 
Leslie kept her cool the rest of the game, even as the fans of the host nation pointed and laughed, even as the photographer who caught the hair waved it around. After the game, Jackson apologized to Leslie, but when the gold medalist asserted that only a hard, intentional yank could have released the ponytail, and Jackson knew exactly what she was doing, Jackson insisted that wasn't the case, that her fingers got caught. And years later, Australian captain Michelle Timms backed her teammate, saying Jackson was too busy playing to notice Leslie's hair situation, and that accusations of a deliberate yank were ludicrous. But there's more. The night of the incident, an unnamed Australian player told Lisa Olsen of the Daily News that the hair thing was intentional, that it was payback for the Americans' dirty play and their attitude. Players in the locker room after the fact weren't talking about the silver medal, they were chattering about the hair. Though Tim's vouched for Jackson, she also clearly took some cruel satisfaction in seeing Leslie's hair on the floor. And in an interview for Australian television, Jackson didn't seem apologetic, claiming the only fabulous moment of the tournament for her was when Leslie's hair came out. A couple years later, Jackson still said it was an accident, but implied that Leslie deserved it. Hmm. Okay, you ready? Let's go to the tape. So the first thing I want you to notice is the ball. The rebound comes off of the rim, and neither Leslie nor Jackson has a real chance to grab it. Now watch Jackson. Her right hand swings up, apparently to contest the shot, but it comes down backhanded with some force. And if you freeze it right there, I think that looks like grabbing, not getting caught. Even the way Jackson releases the hair, smoothly, without any visible surprise, is to me suspicious. So I want to know what you think. But based on the testimonies, the witness statements, and the video evidence, I'm ruling Lauren Jackson guilty of intentional hair removal. According to Beef Law, the sentence for Jackson's crime is that Lisa Leslie gets to have the last word. So let's go to her comments at the podium after the game. Quote, I told her she could have the hair. I'll take the gold. Got him. Anyway, Tim's argued that Leslie was trying to get in Jackson's head somehow, that she didn't know how good the kid was. But she clearly hadn't asked Leslie, who said if Jackson came to the WNBA, she'd be huge, that she had all the tools to be a great player, and in fact, she'd love to have Jackson on the Sparks. No such luck. In a 2001 draft absolutely packed with great players, the soon-to-be 20-year-old Jackson went number one overall to the Seattle Storm, a Western Conference team hoping to one day rival the Sparks. Jackson broke out instantly, becoming a rookie all-star alongside Leslie in the West. But the Storm didn't improve much. And while Jackson did score a rookie season-high 26 points one night against the Sparks, Leslie led LA to a regular season sweep of Seattle. She went on to win her first MVP trophy, then win the Sparks the 2001 championship, the first WNBA title not won by the Houston Comets. But Jackson had reinforcements on the way. With another number one pick in 2002, the Storm added another huge name and future legend, UConn point guard Sue Bird. The towering center had a perfect new co-star in the creative and deadly bird. The storm could actually rival the Sparks now. And the second time LA and Seattle met that year, Leslie got tangled up with Jackson and threw an elbow into her back. It didn't get called a foul, but it did precipitate a pretty rowdy fight between their teammates. Fight aside, that was Jackson's first ever win over the Sparks. Leslie warned that the teams would meet again in a few weeks and she felt bad for what the storm had coming. But what they had coming was another W. Just days after Leslie made history with the WNBA's first in-game dunk, Jackson's clutch free throws against the Sparks sealed a fifth straight win for a team en route to its first playoff berth and a first round matchup against the Sparks. It didn't go so hot. Leslie controlled LA's two game sweep and at one point dropped Jackson with a knee to the groin. I would love to show you a clip of that, but there is way too little WNBA video on the internet. Anyway, the wounded Storm star finished that decisive game two with just four points on one of nine shooting. The Sparks went on to win their second title, and the domination continued the following month in China when Leslie and the US wrecked Australia on their way to a gold medal in the FIBA World Championship. Jackson was perhaps too eager to best her rival and spent much of that semifinal loss on the bench with foul trouble. For the next couple years, Jackson and Leslie succeeded without crossing paths much. They were all-star teammates again in 03, but Leslie injured her knee in that game and sat a bunch of the season. Seattle, meanwhile, missed the playoffs, but under new coach Ann Donovan, Jackson became more of an inside force and won her first MVP. In 2004, Leslie returned strong and took back the trophy, but MVP runner-up Jackson, with Bird back at her side, led Seattle to their first title. The Storm avoided LA in the playoffs when the Sparks fell in the first round. 
In 05, another potential playoff showdown fell through when both teams lost in the first round. And even when their paths did cross, there was a lot of avoiding taking place. Jackson claimed her rival and all-star teammates still didn't talk to her because she hadn't gotten over the hair incident, which Jackson still described as an accident. But they couldn't avoid each other in the 2004 Olympics, where the U.S. once again beat Australia in the final. This time, Leslie had Jackson's WNBA teammate, Sue Bird, by her side as America ran away with the game in the fourth quarter. Jackson herself had another disappointing Olympic final, scoring just 12 points on 16 shots, while her rival took home a third Olympic gold. By the middle of the decade, Jackson was a fully formed superstar, not far behind Leslie in the 2006 MVP voting. Leslie certainly wasn't going to hand the throne over to Jackson, but before another Spark Storm playoff series, she spoke highly of her foe's maturation. She still saw Jackson as a physical player who beat her up on the block, but she'd apologize when it got out of hand. Jackson was good, and now she just played ball with less of the extracurricular stuff. Leslie said they even talked and exchanged compliments at the All-Star game. And Jackson herself basically agreed that she had grown up a bit. These words all preceded a typically chippy first round series. Jackson outplayed Leslie during a game one Seattle victory, but Bird missed opportunities late in game three and the storm blew Jackson's last and best chance at beating the full strength Sparks. And I don't think Jackson ever got the satisfaction of beating Leslie that she craved. In 2007, Jackson won MVP again, but Leslie was out that whole year after giving birth to her first child, who interestingly enough is named Lauren. Leslie insists that's a coincidence. In 2008, Leslie returned and once again led the U.S. to an Olympic gold medal game against the Opals. Leslie told her teammates, there's only one Lauren Jackson and five of us, which accurately predicted a game America dominated despite Jackson's 20 points and 10 rebounds. Leslie rubbed it in by wearing all four of her golds in her last Olympic medal ceremony. Jackson, meanwhile, needed ankle surgery after the Olympics, so she could only sit and watch as Leslie and the Sparks beat the Storm in yet another playoff series. In 2009, Jackson once again missed a Sparks Storm playoff series with injuries. Leslie claimed Seattle was actually more dangerous without Jackson than led LA to another series win. In 2010, at long last, Jackson stayed healthy, matched Leslie by winning a third career MVP, finally led Seattle to a series victory over the Sparks and eventually won her second title. But it wasn't quite the same because Leslie had already retired. And that was it. Jackson left the league a couple years later. She'd cemented herself beside Leslie among the greatest WNBA bigs ever, but her team never beat Leslie's in a major event despite numerous opportunities. 2012 was Jackson's final Olympic appearance. The Australians lost to the US in the semifinal, but Jackson broke Leslie's Olympic career scoring record before passing the torch to the next great Australian center. And I think this beef has a happy ending. It started out as a petty, lopsided feud, defined by what was either a bizarre accident or more likely a cruel and immature act. It ended just as lopsided, but it became a real rivalry, defined more by physical play and mutual respect than hatred. These two definitely didn't become friends, and they might never, unless Jackson someday apologizes for the hair pull. That just might do it, and there's still time. Thanks a lot for watching Beef History. If you want to binge watch old episodes, we got a bunch of those right here. Or if you want to peek at something new, check this out.